witnessed many revolutions uh, in, in the world and of course in this country. My first revolution was in 1998, the internet revolution, when the internet came to Kenya. Do you remember the modem? How many people in the room remember the modem? Yes, now we know your age. <laughs> the rest do not even know what a modem looks like. I was one of the people that participated in this introduction when the Africa Online brought in the internet and later Wananchi Online came in and disrupted the market. In the year 2002, we had the wireless come in and we started having Wi-Fi. In 2007, M-Pesa was approved. I was in the telecom sector. And we put up, Safaricom put up 4,000 towers. At the time that Safaricom was putting up these towers, I was in the telecom sector. And that's why I'm interested in infrastructure revolution. That's why I buy the electric vehicle charging infrastructure revolution, and it's coming. Now, this has been presented by other speakers, the date and the timelines when uh, we are going to have the cutoff for the internal combustion engines. So now imagine a blackout when you are with your family and you have guests having a dinner. How do you like that? Not, not fun, right? At least now we have the solar uh, charging cells for lighting when there's a blackout. But now, imagine a blackout when you're on your way on the Nai Nairobi Nakuru Highway and you are going to charge. And it's midnight. Would you like that? I don't think so. My concept is very simple. What I'm sharing today is very simple. What do lions and EV infrastructure have in common? Anyone? Yeah, the answer is right there, right? The lithium ions are charging. Lithium ion batteries, right? You get the joke? Yeah. Right. Is Mburu still here from Tesla? Okay, he's gone. He, he, we work together on this. Um, we have the Tesla has the home use battery, about 10 kilowatt hours, and then they have the power pack, 210 kilowatt hours for commercial use. This, was how, this, has, this is one of the case studies I have been looking at on the topic of battery energy storage, and then now I'm trying to link it with the electric vehicle charging, and you're going to see the link in a moment. And now Tesla also has the three megawatt hour mega pack, that's what they're calling it, eh? Starting, I think, last year they launched it. So some case studies, we have 3,150 kilowatt hours at Kruger Park. We also have 20 megawatts, 80 megawatt hour battery in Edison, Southern California. And another sample of use of battery is the Hawaiian Highland, which island which has 54 megawatt hours combined, integrated with solar. Where are we going with this? Now, as the price of battery and use of battery, uh, as the use of battery continues, the prices continue to crash. Moving from 1,000 kilowatt, uh, USD per kilowatt hour in 2010 to now 156 USD per kilowatt hour in 2019. That's a major crash, right? As the technology improves and adoption increases, the prices crash. Yes, we are still going to see the link. So there are all manner of uses of battery energy storage, backup power to cut peak demand charges, peak capacity, pro providing fre frequency regulation, and so on. Today, I want to focus on the link between battery energy storage and e-mobility. And because I know the engineers in the room who will be disappointed if we don't do some math, like Amani Konde from Kenjin, I had some small calculation here. Assume that you travel 20 kilometers a day because your workplace is 10 kilometers away. That's 20 per day, right? You can get out your calculator. No, no, sorry, I'm not there yet. This, uh, most of the electric vehicles in the market today, we have the Nissan with 40 kilowatt hour battery. It has a range of 240 kilometers. That is how much energy per kilometer. Yes, you still need your calc sum. Some, some of us will do it mentally sum in the calc. Does the math work? Amani, is it correct? Okay, the battery is 40 kilowatt hours and the range is to 40 kilometers. So if you divide 
the energy by the kilometers, you get that you need 160 watt hours per kilometer. That means that if, you're, if you travel 20 kilometers a day, this is the amount of energy used per day. Now, assuming that you have two vehicles in that house, you're going to need 3.2 times two, right? So how much energy do you need in that home for traveling? 6.4. And 10 kilometers, for those who cannot conceptualize, in Nairobi is the Goreti corner. If you come from Mongatarongai, you need 20. If you come from Kitengela, it's 32. So please, you're going to need this math as we go along. Eh? So we need about 6.4 units per day if we are going to use uh, to charge at our homes. At the same time, you might find that, I don't know how much you use in your house. Eh? My house, they use about 10 kilowatt hours. Are we wasteful or efficient? Okay, fine. So I used my, uh, the 10 that I'm using in my house. It's about 10. So it means in that home, we are needing 16.4 units per day. So if you do your maths, you need the 3.2 units. You are two cars. There are 30 days in a month. If you work out your tariffs, you'll find that you're paying about 23 shillings per unit. So the cost per month is 4,500, and the cost in a year is 54,000. And you can work out for the people of Ongatarongai and for the people of Kitengela. So if you're from Ongatarongai, it's costing you 109,000. If you're from uh, Kitengela, it's 163,000. Now, are you beginning to see where I'm going with this? So are you going to bring in your charger and add it to your normal infrastructure? and pay the grid, or are you going to put up a solar? If you look at the payback of this calculation, what are you going to do? And so we are saying, what you need to do is do your math, and then you see uh, if your capacity is about 16.4, which we have calculated, you might want to put a solar PV of about two, to six kilowatt hour, because according to a research done in Nairobi, the peak demand of the Nairobi home is 300 watts to 3.6 kilowatt. That's how we, we range. And so you can do your maths. And if you're going to buy a power wall, which I showed you earlier, the 6.4 kilowatt hour uh, by Tesla is 3,000 USD. If, you, if your consumption is higher and you need the 13.5 kilowatt hour, that's 6,500 USD. We are still going on to see the link. Now, if you have the level one charger in your home, uh, your, which is about 1.9 kilowatt, it's going to cost you 10 hours to charge. If you have the level two charger, which is 7.2 kilowatts, it will cost you five hours. But if you have the direct current fast charge, it will take you, which is 50 kilowatts, it will take you 30 minutes to charge. Now, here's the thing. Should you charge two cars at the same time? What will your demand be? Should you have the direct charge, fast charge, direct DCFC, and you charge two cars? You see what will happen to your profile? You go all the way to 100 kilowatt. Now, our friend here from Energy Regulatory will slap you with a high demand charge. So what should you do? You should design your solar PV put it together with your battery so that you don't draw from the grid at the same time and pay the high demand charge. And you can do that and drop your charges by 73%. This is the moment at which you clap because now you got it. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was a simple example for your home, but we want to take this now to the malls, the airports, the workplaces so that we have several cars charging at the same time without drawing a high demand and paying a high demand charge. And so we are saying, put your solar, size your solar, size your battery, and be able to do simultaneous charging without having to pay higher charges. And if you, if you look at the more distance you're covering, the more you're getting free charge from solar, the better your investment. So you just have to do your sizing. At the same time, I spoke earlier about a blackout, right? We are saying right now in Kenya, we have frequent blackouts. If you are already driving down to the west side and you are low on charge and there's a blackout, you have a problem. 
And so we are saying that battery energy storage is going to stabilize the grid and ensure that we minimize blackouts. And that's another reason why lithium ions, or ions if you like, are important for EV charging infrastructure. Simple? Right. So what are the challenges? Of course, people have already spoken about waste management, lack of legal and regulatory framework, skill shortage in the short term, compatible protocols and standards, and high cost of initial installation. If you do what I'm proposing, cost of initial installation will be a barrier, but ultimately your payback is good. And of course, then payback becomes a problem. So what do we recommend? Embrace battery energy storage, integration for EV charging, plan for waste management, plan for training on battery energy storage alongside EV maintenance. Let us design least cost when we are doing EV infrastructure rollout so that we ensure low tariffs and develop compatible protocols and standards. Thank you. <laughs>